I, I like your I like your whole setup you got there. You got uh, Yeah, man. I, I live on Zoom chats and I don't know. Our whole world is virtual now. So I figured if we're doing a little Villanova basketball thing, I might as well get a little, you know. I got my crew back there from when we went to uh, <laughs> the Maui Invitational back when we uh, were not the favorite to win and all that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of memories. Yeah. Every, everything on Zoom is, I mean, it obviously sucks, but it's kind of cool because you get to connect with people you normally wouldn't be able to connect with. So, yeah. I mean, nice. I hate interviews, but this seems like, like you have good intentions and oh yeah you got you got some good got some good interviews already in so i'm here oh yeah this, no, this is gonna be a, you want to talk about <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one this is gonna be a fun one don't worry about it yeah so i want to start off by talking about um in high school i was while i was doing my research for you i so you were a two-time gatorade state player of the year in delaware only yeah. uh, boys basketball player ever to do that won yeah the, won the state championship in 2002 and while i was doing my research I was reading a Max Preps article by Kevin Asklin, and he's called that that 2002 team the best team in Stanford or in history, which is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Stanford, uh, as you know or may not know, is coached by Stan Water. I mean, excuse, yeah, Stan Waterman. Yeah. And just like Coach Wright, he's like a paternal figure in my life. He knows the game. He loves it. He loves me. We still have a connection. Um, and you know, what's crazy is my middle school team was like number one in the country, seventh and eighth grade. We had a guy taller than me. We had Art Bowers, who I think um, Delaware basketball player uh, history kind of leaves out because he went to St. Benedict's with JR and all of our Tim Thomas players, New Jersey guys. Um, and then we all went to Stanford. Um, Joe Dyson, Earl Miller. Earl Miller is literally the reason I played. I started playing basketball. And um, in high school, we were just so good. I mean, we had like a 6'3", Phil Ekman. I used to get to shoot threes. And we had, we just, we wanted it so bad. And when I got there freshman year, I think we had like two of the best players in the state, Tony Washam and rest in peace, Josh Hill. And uh, it really all came together. And my junior year, we won it. We were, um, my senior year, we, uh, we, got, we lost to probably the best player in the state at the time, Mark Eckerson in Glasgow. Um, and my high school experience was, it was great. I mean, being here now is like, once you're a high school legend, you're that forever, you know? Yeah. So um, I just, I remember being ranked really high and like the first time um, our teams were sponsored by Adidas in Delaware um, was our team. And I went to ABCD camp three years in a row, played in an all-star game. My high school experience was great. I I played on some traveling teams and then I started playing for the Tim Thomas players and it just put me on a national level. And I mean, I, I was getting recruited by like everybody and I really didn't even know what was going on. I wasn't a student of the game back then. I really wasn't a fan of basketball and I was just there. I just showed up every day and did my best and it was yeah. good enough, you know, Yeah, for sure. What, when did you first meet Jay and what were your first impressions of him? Um, Coach Wright, when did I first meet him? I don't know. Probably was sometime in high school. So before Coach Wright was there, I was getting recruited by Joe Jones at Villanova, I believe. And Coach Hill, Fred Hill was at, um, was somewhere. I don't know. I think Seen Hall, right? Maybe. I don't okay. know. Or Rutgers or somewhere local. He was always on me. Okay. And um, I was getting recruited by all of them at different schools. And then they all went to the same school. And then because I was so based in like, uh, uh, North Jersey with the Tim Thomas players. I knew Jason Frazier from the Long Island Panthers. I knew Curtis Sumter. I definitely knew Mike Nardi. He played for a team called the Newark Rams. We called them the Newark Hams back then. We used to play together in like every regional tournament all the time. We used to play against uh, Randy and play against Allen all the time. And when they all committed, it was just like, okay, we got a one, a two, a three, a four. I mean, a one, a two, a three, and a five. I'm going to play the four. It's going to work out. Um, so, I mean, when I first met Jay, I think he probably realized that I wasn't like a student in the game, like say like a Mike Nardi. Um, and I think he just wanted me to, it was a whole different, you know, program back then, but he, he admired that I worked hard. I had a great attitude and I was willing to buy into what he was building there. And I think 
Um, he was impressed by my commitment to being an overall great person. I really wanted to be my authentic self and dynamic and participate in campus and show people that, you know, basketball players are not one dimensional. Um, and I, I was successful with that. Mm -hmm. Did, um, did the fact that that legendary 2002 recruiting class was already there, did that kind of influence your decision to go there? Cause you knew that once you got there, you guys could beat anybody in the country. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't even look at them as like, Oh, that was like such a the rank, the highest, you know, recruiting class ever or whatever. I really just saw like five, four, four guys that I knew or had played against and I was familiar with that had committed to a school that wasn't so far away from me. And it was my choice. You know, if, if, if my dad, rest in peace, he really wanted me to go to Duke and I just didn't get that. I didn't get the vibes that yeah. I was going to go there and be impactful and have a great experience um so yeah I mean me and Jay had already played together Jason Frazier and um and against each other as well so I was very comfortable um and I had I think the first college game I ever went to was uh at Villanova actually back in the old old pavilion not the fan you know okay yeah and talk about your freshman year a little bit. You guys went, I think it was, yeah, it was 18 and 17. And that was um, kind of <laughs> right before you guys flipped the switch and became a perennial tournament team. Yeah, we had uh, suspensions and um, they only, oh, wait, one second. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so weird. My TV unpaused just now. Oh. Uh, my freshman year in college, um, we had suspensions for some like, and you think about it now, like everyone has cell phones, but back then they had to use like these calling card things or whatever. I don't even know. It wasn't even like that when I got there. But um, so me and Mike had to start um, the first five games. I think we were leading the country in minutes because we had like four overtimes against Redland. So we had we were averaging like 45 minutes a game or something. A freshman? Uh, we had like, yeah, <laughs> just like the first five games. So we played Temple at midnight. I think that was our first game. I was so nervous. We beat them, got on a plane, went to California that night, played Redlands the next day, then went, got on a plane again and went to Hawaii and played in the uh, Maui Invitational. And um, I think, yeah, we lost to Shamana that year. And it was just, it built so much character. And I think the guys in that class ahead of us were, they had a lot of pressure on them to be great. And then the phone card scandal thing happened and we went to the NIT and I just remember never wanting to be in that situation again. It's like, it felt like you were playing for like 65th place and yeah. the season, you know, everybody's into March madness and you're playing in New York and Biggie's tournament. We had some good wins that year. I remember I took a charge on Ben Gordon, my freshman year at the garden. And I still kind of feel that right here. <laughs> um, and it just built so much character. And we were so dynamic and we knew if we just kept working at it and, and coach, Wright used to say this thing, like the stone cutter, like, you know, chipping away at the stone. Yeah. yeah. And that's basically what we did. Um, and then the next year we just, it all came together. We were in sweet 16, mm -hmm. got robbed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, was there a specific game your fresh freshman or sophomore year where you were like, okay, that was kind of the, the flip the switch moment. Um, you know, it was so long ago, but I think, I think that when, I think, I don't know if it was my, I think it was my sophomore year when we had Kansas at, 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 back then it was the Wachovia Center, I think it's Wells Fargo now. Um, and it was like a snowstorm yeah, yeah. and Wayne Simeon was like the man. And I just remember watching the like tape and seeing the scouting report and they're like, you're guarding them. Da, 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 da. And I was just like, all right, bet, let's do it. Yeah. And uh, I think we smacked them <laughs> or we, or I don't remember what we won or I think we beat them. And that's when we started getting ranked. And it was just like, mm -hmm. it was, that was, I think that was it. I mean, I don't know. I, I thought I was going to play the four and like come off the bench freshman year, you know, earn my minutes. And then yeah. I was like starting mm -hmm. and um. I don't think anyone else remembers it that way. Cause like I look, people are like, Oh, three years started. I'm like, no, I started all four years. Yeah. Um, and then we started running a four guard offense and yeah. it was just like, it was a lot of fun. man. And yeah. I think with my personality and what I wanted out of the game, it really fit with like 
being on a court with like four killers that were like ready to score all the time. And I, if you look back, I like never shot, I never yeah. shot the ball. I like never, I just didn't, I didn't have the want or need to like go out and get yeah. 40 points. I think I can do it now because I like, when I play in leagues, I'm like, Oh, I want to win. And I'm the man. Yeah. But like yeah. Back then I just wasn't, I don't know. I, I wasn't that person. And yeah. so I think coach really put all the pieces together. And I think our, I think there's this thing like a plus minus percentage. And like yeah. when I was on the court, we were a better team. So yeah. <laughs> you could ask my teammates, I would get offensive rebounds and kick it out. Um, and for like a three from Allen and he'd be like, thank you. I guess yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I just, it was just part of who I am uh, uh-huh. to be accommodating. And I used to take so many screens. I mean, take so many charges and yeah. I just wanted to go out. I really wanted to win attitude every night. I like yeah. I wanted to like dive on loose balls and I was the, a Villanova basketball player. And that's, I think that's why I got rewarded with lots of playing time and lots of experience and whew, we had a squad, man. Yeah. And it, it's, it's kind of stupid because people look at it and they're like, Oh, like you only average five or six points. And it's like, yeah, but you're playing your role. Like that's, Jay's not telling you to go out there and drop 25 or whatever, you know, he's yeah, I mean, on the ball and stuff. Yeah. I, I did my role. And if you look at the stats, I think I'm still top 20 in rebounds and I'm definitely oh, yeah. top 10 in blocks. So yeah. yeah and least, I'm like, a, I was like six, seven and three quarters. I'm like six, eight. Yeah. And it's like Josh, uh, when we used to play like UConn, it, like their shortest player was like my size. It was like Rudy Gay, Charlie Villanueva, Josh Boone, um Hilton Armstrong versus me <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like uh Roy Hibbert Jeff Green Patrick Young Jr versus me or yeah. like uh Aaron what I, I don't know this is always great big men like when I was in the Big East it was like David Padgett at Louisville Aaron something I went to Pittsburgh I mean Pitts Noggle was shooting threes at West Virginia I mean there's no dominant I not to take away from anything now, but like there's no like big men, right? Oh yeah. Like everyone's shooting threes and stuff like that. But it was just a different game back then. And I think I knew I was gonna play good against better, you know, bigger guys. And I just played hard as hell. And it it, it really I don't know why it was just part of who I was to just work hard. I think that's what my parents instilled in me. It was just to work hard. They're both police officers. My number was five L. Um and I don't know. I just brought that every day. Yeah, for sure. Do, what do you remember about that that almost plane crash? I think it was the day before your 20th birthday. Bro, the- yes. That's so crazy. Uh, we were leaving Rhode Island. Uh, we were leaving Providence, Rhode Island, Dunkin' Donuts Center. And we they were, like, you know, doing something to the plane, like watering it down or de-icing it or something. We're like, oh, regular, you know private you know charter jets in yeah. high school or in college and we're just like you know i think we had lost or won or we won i think, we won. Or something. I think I in overtime yeah we got there and we were like starting to build our season and i yeah. remember uh i just remember like everybody like when we we're going down i was like i love you man it's it it's it da, da, da. and i was just like if we die we die i was so i was in a different place back then and i think i was really developing who i was and i was kind of like on the inside, I was very emo and like <laughs> trying to develop who I was. And I was like, it's it, it's over. I was like done with it. Yeah. And then uh when we landed, it was like we did we all went through that together, you know. And I remember we had to get on that same plane in less than like eight hours and fly out again. And coach Crafton, who uh I think he's now a head coach somewhere, shout out to him. He uh totally uh he was like, I'm not getting on that plane. He caught a train or a bus home or something. <laughs> so crazy man we we that group had some some great experiences and we were i in my opinion i only lived it and i only know that experience we were really dynamic and you know yeah talk and then obviously you said you guys got robbed in the sweet 16 i mean anybody that has eyes know that you got robbed talk about that that experience of that that travel look at me dunking on sean may isn't that crazy? That is. That's I awesome. that you, but Sean May back in the day was lit. That's <laughs> awesome. Definitely, definitely caught a bang on him in that game. I remember my cousins being there. It was like, I think it was in Syracuse, I think. No, it was in North Carolina. I don't know where it was. Anyway, um, yeah, we just, 
we came to play and we thought we, were, we had a shot and we thought we were going to win and we deserved the win. And then they called the play. And when you watch it back, it's just like, that was got to be one of the worst calls in NCAA history. And this is, this is Alan Ray, like, you know, very skilled guard, doesn't turn the ball over that much. And we were just giving it to him. I think we were all just on another level, man. This is, whew, that was, it was yeah. great. Um, and it's just like, it was just a battle. And then they robbed us. Yeah. And then, then that next year, that's when we came back and we we're like, yeah. like everybody's going down. Like we were going to steamroll everybody. Yeah. And the Big East was tough that year, that next year. And I remember even Boston, everybody had, every team had a great player on it. You know, it was no duds and they were all, it was a stud on every team. Jared Dudley and uh, Boston College, right? Yeah. Craig's, um, I don't know. He went was in it was like every team had a had a had a stud on it yeah. and um we just did really well and i'm sorry i'm not answering your question <laughs> no no i mean no no that that's that that's right on i'm just i was just thinking about the call so do you was it a tr- like do they call it travel or an up and down because the only a travel thing, so okay because like the only thing i remember looking back at the replay is like the only thing that could have made sense was maybe they said that he landed before he shot which he didn't but that 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 was just ridiculous to me. I mean, yeah, man. Um, that seems so long ago. And if you think about it, all those guys were pros. I think they yeah. had Raymond Felton, um, the guy that went to Charlotte. I forget yeah. his name. Um, William something Williams. Marcus Williams? No, not something Marvin, like that. Marvin, Marvin, Williams. Marvin Williams. Marvin Williams. They had a squad, man. Yeah, they had a squad. And um, they won I don't know. When, yeah, yeah, they, we year, lost yeah. the eventual champion. I mean, we lost the eventual champion pretty much every I mean, time. Basically, right? I mean, <laughs> this year and then uh, just like this year, right? And then yeah, your junior year too. You guys lost to Florida, who won on. Oh the- my God! Yeah. Wait, before that though, we lost. We beat Boston College in overtime. Yeah. Backdoor play that we practice every. I'm the last option. No one's guarding me because I never shoot. Kyle throws the ball to me. I go for glass guy goals ten goal tends it i like i'm like if you look back at the tape i'm like like i wasn't i didn't even have the mindset to be like that definitely goes in my everyone else has the higher basketball i have a high basketball iq naturally because i was smart but i would i didn't even think like i thought go glass because you know if it hits the glass he'll goaltend it but like biggest i, I think i was quoted by saying biggest shot of my life i didn't get to see it go in <laughs> and forever since then i've been hated in boston i swear like really? even like, go to like hang out it's just me and boston just don't get along yeah. i don't even think people in boston like each other but whatever yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh that's a tough town um so then we we play um a stacked florida team i think that Corey brewer joaquin noah brandon al horford al horford yeah. um and like they had a squad yeah and we uh we did our thing and they just, I think we just ran out of gas and they beat us. Um, I don't even really remember what the score was, but then they were coached by like some legendary coach. Too. Yeah, Billy remember. Donovan. Billy Donovan. Yeah. And then he went yeah. coached at Orlando or something, right? Yeah, well, he, he, um, he was in OKC and now he's with the Bulls. I mean, he had, he coached a team to the NBA Finals. Uh, actually, no, he wasn't, he wasn't a coach that team, but no, no. He was a, he was I think, NBA you know, the Big East back then was so, and I keep saying this, but it was, yeah, I think my first year in the Big East, we, Miami was in it and it had um, Darius Miles. Okay. And I only remember that because the scouting report was no threes and I only played three minutes that game. If you look back at the stats and coach was like, like, I, like for some reason I like, didn't guard a three and then he just didn't put me back in the game and afterwards i remember him coming up to us when we got home and he was like man i'm sorry and i was just like coach this is a scouting report and i think right then is when me and coach right clicked because he knew i got it yeah and i i mean of course i was hurt but i was a freshman and i was just like i i'm come from a family of like order law and like rules and like if yeah. you say no threes no threes and he didn't start me the second half and then didn't put me in the whole second half and I just had to sit there and watch and I was just yeah. like and he he apologized and I just was like no coach I was wrong and he and I think that is when me and coach right we saw eye to eye wow. and uh that was just like it was just probably little tiny stories like that that just made this group so much 
more than what it was. I remember, here's another story, right? I think um, uh, Sports Illustrated wanted to do like the top six players on the team and like take a picture of the team or whatever. And at the time, I'm a starter, uh-huh. right? But they put Kyle Lowry and Jason Frazier in it because Kyle was killing it and Jason was a McDonald's All-American. Yeah. And then they, and then afterwards, Coach was like, you know, I did, I didn't even think like, and I'm just like, you didn't think like, but those were just little things that just didn't matter to me back then. Like I just, I mean, the me now who's you know cultivated my life and has a career and is a superstar and like has traveled the world with music. I have an ego, but back then it was just like, I was just, I just wanted to work hard and earn my spot. Yeah. And I think they respected that. For sure. For sure. Do you think that if, if Kurt got, di- didn't get hurt that year, you guys would have won it for sure in your, your junior year? I mean, Kurt getting hurt was just, we, we dealt with a lot of adversity and Jason being hurt was crazy. Yeah. Kurt being hurt was crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, if Kurt didn't get hurt, I look when we played at uh, at Kansas after we smacked them, mm-hmm. or no, my freshman year when we got smacked by Kansas, I remember Kurt dunked that the ball so hard on. Like, if you talk to Kurt, ask him about when he dunked that Kansas. I remember mm-hmm. him yamming it like kind of like Mikael Bridges and at the Big East tournament like a couple years ago just right down the middle boom and I was ah oh. oh, and like if you watch the tape back he like smacks his chest afterwards and that just that lives in my the fiber of who I am yeah for the rest. like Kurt is one of my best friends on the team and we got along great and we, we held each other down in college and we still talk to this day but Kurt is just was an anomaly to me I mean you have to understand I was guarding all these people in, in practice. So, like, I had to yeah. guard Jason Frazier, who's, like, 6'11 athletic, can dunk yeah. on anybody in the world, and probably only dunked on me, like, never uh-huh. <laughs> in practice. I have, to call, I have to guard Randy Foy, who's, like, a 6'4 stallion, like, yeah. from Jersey, killing people. The Bronx assassin, Alan Ray. I'm guarding all these people yeah. in practice. So, like, I just think of them as, like, the highest – form of a human being basketball player ever like yeah yeah <laughs> so Kurt to me was just like he was like almost my size he could dribble shoot he was athletic I just I thought the world occurred and when he got hurt it just mm-hmm. I don't know I thought I would step up and you know people stepped up and that was kind of the emergence of Kyle Lowry and that dynamic of him coming in was another adjustment we had to make mm-hmm. um with so many dominant guards and Oof, if Kurt didn't get hurt, man. I mean, I got to have him again for my senior year. God yeah. bless. I'm so happy because if Kurt wasn't there and yeah. Kyle left, it would have been, <laughs> been, been a tough year. I mean, it, it could, wasn't a tough year, but it would have been. Everybody left. Yeah, it was. That was like, and, it was, and that was new. You know, it wasn't normal for yeah. people to leave early around in that era for Villanova. And um, I was a little hurt when Kyle left, but I understood. And, like, our yeah. parents are so close. And it was the right thing. And now he's a, you know, NBA legend. So yeah. Hall yeah. of Famer. Yeah. I wanted to come to Philly. I wanted to be a sixer. I know. I know. I was seeing all those rumors and I was like, oh, is it going to happen? Is it going to go down? And I remember, I remember just looking at my phone and waiting. I think the deadline was three o'clock and I was like, oh. Man, I wanted that so bad. I, you know, I'm just, I'm moving back here to kind of take care of my mom, get some things right with this part and like develop a different part of my life professionally. Um, and so I used to be a Nets fan, but I'm not a Kyrie Irving fan at all. And KD can mm-hmm. kick rocks. So, um, I mean, he's great, but yeah. like, I just don't, I don't root for him. So I was a Nets yeah. fan because I was in Brooklyn for so long and, you know, Randy played there. And I was that. And then now I need a new team to root for. I mean, I root for LeBron, period. But Same, same. Woo, man. I mean, I root for LeBron because ABCD camp. Oh, yeah, you probably – of, I was on the whole circuit with him, so I yeah, just yeah. always saw everything there, and I was just that's like – That's true, man, that's true. Man, this is like he really wanted it, and he went and got it, and I respect that, you know? Yeah. Um, But, yeah, if Kurt didn't get hurt, I think we would have been a great, better team. Uh, we, we He was kind of like a solid contributor as far as not just the on the court, but just like motivation mm-hmm. to get better and be work harder. He always worked hard. He always was focused on the court. 
and then, you know, workouts and things like that. And he's a great person. So he really added to our team. And yeah, we, I mean, we took some blows for yeah. sure. Yeah. You talked a little bit about this earlier, the four guard lineup, but just like go into a little bit more detail because it was literally you and four four guards. I don't even no, know. My high school team was taller than my college team. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's insane. Is that crazy? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Um, you got to excuse me. I'm drinking like so much water right now because I'm working oh. out trying to lose this COVID weight. No, you're good. Are you, are you good? Okay. I um I got I got heavy though, bro. I oh no, like, me too. Like, oh oh, I get what you mean. Getting oh me yeah, too. Yeah, I, I ruptured my Achilles in 2016 and just never really got back. And I was I think I got up to about 340, 330. <laughs> I I, I <laughs> and now I'm like yeah, I'm, I'm going back. I got my medium shirt on. I'm feeling good okay, right now. Okay, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was the question again? Oh, just just like talk a little bit more about the the four guard lineup and just what it was like being. Oh yeah, you know um. Well, we had Mike, who's like, you know, he's the assistant coach or yeah. some type of coach at Villanova. And he's just a basketball guy, like a gem rat. He, yeah. So I, I before Villanova, would, like, play high school basketball and then not play until for, like, three months. Yeah. And then start working out again for the season. Mike was like, let's get shots up after a loss. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, man, this guy loves basketball. And I needed that. I think. Yeah. Uh, parts of me he needed you know parts of my personality he needed too but um M mike was a gem rat and then you had um the two which was like either allen who was like a three assassin and then nobody could guard randy because he was so versatile and strong um same with allen they they were kind of the same and i think that that narrative of them being like twins was cool when i got there um and Kurt was a guard. So then we, we developed this four guard offense. And I, I think a lot of people overlook the fact that when I got, as a freshman, we had Derek Snow and he was a beast too. Mm -hmm. um, he's a legend. And I think people should give him more respect and definitely, you know, put some respect on his name. He definitely yeah. helped shape those guys. Um, but, you know, he just wasn't part of coach Wright's recruiting class. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we had a four guard offense and we basically, you had to, you had to know the footwork and you yeah. had to, have guard skills and i think if you see me like i was always jab series turn around jumper and the, and the paint because of that development so then when kyle came it was like we had two point guards and two two three guards it was just like you got to put the best five on the floor yeah and i don't know i it's so weird that i was always on the court because i'm like i just didn't i i know this sounds weird and i really don't care what people think of me obviously am i my I just didn't think I was the best option but then when you like watch back the tape I was always helping people on defense always just my basketball natural instinct yeah. was to like help my teammates and if you got four people out there just straight destroying people on offense you need someone that only really cares about getting rebounds and exactly. blocking shots and steals and yeah man my 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 post d was unheard of and like mm -hmm. un, unmatched period i was always guarding somebody stronger or taller than me bigger than me and um the four guard offense you know at first it was crazy because our plays were like one-on-one 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 yeah. but look it was working, so yeah, I, I was, you know, I, I was bleeding blue and white. I still do to this day. Yeah. So I was like, whatever you say, coach, I'm down. Yeah, literally, like he never was like, don't shoot the ball. He always like shoot more, be more aggressive. But like I was like, doesn't it make more sense to just give the ball to like yeah. Kyle or Allen or Randy <laughs> or Mike to, or Kurt or, or Jason in the post? I just and I just was always on the court. I mean, I don't know who else wasn't on the court because we had six starters basically. Yeah. I was always on the court, so, or at least it felt like it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. I'm just, when I look back, I'm just happy, you know, obviously I could have shot more, I could have been a stud somewhere else, or in a different, you know, an alternate reality, I would have been, yeah. like, shooting more, and I was actually a really good shooter, I could have been a lot of other things, but, you know, for what it was, I was perfect for the role, and yeah. I was celebrated and praised and appreciated and a part of something that was so special that, you know, my legacy is untouched, like, yeah. period. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
What was the team's mindset going into your senior year after like losing that whole 2002 recruiting class that graduated, losing Kyle? Um, well, we had some studs come in, uh, like uh Dante was a beast Dante Cunningham we basically yeah. we were like bash brothers we like I don't know if you watch Mighty Ducks back in the day where they had the okay. bash brothers just kids that used to just destroy people that's what okay. we were basically doing um Dwayne Anderson was a hell of an athlete and great person um now he's a coach at Villanova um and we had like just this whole new wave yeah. kind of wave of energy Reggie Redding and then we um was Scotty Reynolds in that too? Yeah. He did. Okay. And <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a whole squad and it was just like a new thing. And I, I was down. It was mm-hmm. just that. And I thought I was going to, you know, contribute more and I was really going to like go off and it kind of didn't go that way. And at that point, I was just like, I wanted to win games, right? And I wanted my legacy to be like, you know, your senior year, you want to go out on top. And yeah. we made it to the tournament and it was just a tough year. It was a transitioning year. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a lot of change in power as far as like, I had worked my way to be a leader on the team. And then like, there was this new wave of people coming in. Um, and it was just difficult to like, really make it all work in such a short period of time. And you know, I think we went to the tournament and we lost in the second round to I, Kentucky. I think it was like Zach Randolph, I think. Or not Zach Randolph. Round, but yeah, it was to Kentucky, yeah. I think they had like a good big man or something. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, but, I'm, uh, you yeah. know, senior year, I, I I don't know. I was I was the man. I had already been an orientation yeah. counselor. I was another orientation counselor. Oh, I was were? like killing it yeah i was the only yeah. basketball player to be an orientation counselor really? twice um awesome. i was like so involved on campus i was like 32nd i was the mc for uh father donahue's uh um uh, presidential inauguration i was oh, just bro. i was on campus yeah. doing my thing i wasn't even i don't know i mean i just i don't know i was just so used to i was being nurtured into this great person yeah. And basketball was such a big thing um, that I just kind of thought it was all going to come together. And it it did, but not fast enough. And then, you know, that same group was the team that went to the Final Four, I think. Yeah, in 2009, yeah. Shane Clark, um, you know, Frank Tweezy, like all those guys. And they just all developed. And I think that, that, that my senior year was like a year where they were all clicking to become yeah. what they became. Be- and that was great. Yeah, it was like a transitional year, kind of. Yeah, and like you never want to. Yeah, I mean that's what it was. It wasn't. It didn't feel the greatest. Yeah. Um, it wasn't easy, and you know, that's it. Period. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure, and I'm sure having somebody like you there still probably played a big role, and you know, having them kind of click and get to that point where they could go to a Final Four. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely take that. Um, I think those guys look to me for leadership and off the court so much too. Yeah. So like I was helping them develop as people without even knowing I was doing it to yeah. this day. And people tell me like, Oh, you did this and you told me this and yeah. this changed my life. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I was just living, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> and I mean, a big part of me was like, I was at that time, I think, I think, you know, after going to Sweet 16, then the Elite 8, and then losing in the second round, and, like, the success I was having on the court and in life, I I had really found confidence to be who I was. And it was – I was, like – like, it was just – it was a lot going on. I mean – Yeah. I mean, after my freshman year, it was just so – in my head, it was so much going on, and in my life, it was going on. And I just never wanted it to be a distraction to what was going on with building up a basketball. Yeah. So I, but at the same time, you got to understand I was cultivating who I was mm-hmm. um, and really just challenging myself to accept myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it was yeah. like, now I'm the actualized version of myself and I love it. So yeah. thank God that I was yeah. in that nurturing uh, community and, had the time and energy and persistence with myself to like just mm-hmm. keep pushing through yeah 
be the best version of myself. And Coach Wright was a big part of that. I mean, the whole staff, everybody. Pat Chambers, I don't know what is going on with the whole Penn State thing, but Pat Chambers is a great person, and he was really big part of my development at Villanova. He was there for a short time, but I just know he's a great guy. Coach Kraft and everybody, everybody on staff, just I just all was, I mean, even to Jeff Pierce, like the weight staff, everybody was just so yeah amazing for mm-hmm. me. So yeah, that, that that that's good to hear. That's definitely good. To yeah, hear. for sure. And, all right. So, what was your favorite off the court moment, and then your favorite on the court moment during your time at Villanova? Oh man. Um, whew. I mean, I think people would chalk up my career to that that last minute overtime play with Kyle, but I just used to really enjoy playing at the Garden, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, winning at the Garden was always just really fun for me. I love playing in New York. I I've, I am a New Yorker. I lived there for 13 years. I probably will go back. And I just always felt something about that place and being in New York. So Big East Tournament was always my favorite. I think probably my sophomore or junior year was the most fun I ever had. Like the year that Allen's eye popped out, that was crazy. That was, I think, um, your junior year. Yeah, that was Yeah, a- I mean, you know better than I do. Uh, that 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 energy, all of that in the Big East tournament, I just loved it. I loved the you know press day and all that. I just loved it. So, mm-hmm. and then off the court, um, you know, honestly, I was really like I said, I was developing who I was, and I was just being me. I think off the court, meeting Mike Nardi as a person really just changed my whole perspective on people. And, um, you know, meeting his family and knowing who he was and that he accepted me and I accepted him. We're like totally different, but like brothers. Yeah. I think off the court, that probably was the most, like in a basketball, in a Villanova basketball world, that was for me the most impactful, you know, beyond just having a relationship with Coach Wright, even to this day, like Mike Nardi is for my mental wellness and my health. And just developing that friendship right from the jump. Mm-hmm. That's probably the most impactful thing off the court. <laughs> or my, I know you, I, I know you're asking for like a moment, but no, but know, no, that, no, that, that, that works. That, for sure. Yeah. We still to this day are brothers to the death. So yeah, I just, you know, you go, I went into the situation thinking, you know, I'm an outsider and I'm about to be in this situation where it's about basketball and, People may have not perceived that that way, but that's how I felt. And I think yeah. Mike was just like a great person, mm-hmm. period. And yeah. when you're a great person, it just, it carries away. It carries through all aspects of, your, of other other people's lives and how you interact with them. And so, mm-hmm. you know, the single most important thing that happened to me off the court was my my friendship with Mike Nart, yeah. period. After you uh, graduated from Nova, you played overseas in Italy a little bit. Talk about that. Thank you how- today. Uh, yeah I hated it. <laughs> how difficult is that I mean going overseas like how, how crazy was that uh you know okay so let's just keep in mind that it was 2007 it was no I didn't have like an iPhone it was yeah like a smartphone. I also had already cultivated a lot of aspects of my life I was I was ready to go and live my life and I'm thinking mm-hmm. Italy I grew up my, my mom is biracial so I grew up eating like um chicken parm and mm-hmm. you know Italian dishes American Italian dishes and I get there and it's like no chicken parm you're American. They're making fun of me because I'm black. They're making fun of me because I'm gay. They're saying stuff like banana at practice. And I'm like, I don't even know if that's like racially charged or like, so I don't think I ever shared that publicly. But anyway, um, I was on three different teams and well, two different teams. And I practiced with Nardi's team for like a week. Okay. And I was just in such a depression and I was not feeling it at all. And yeah. I remember just telling my mom, I'm like, I'm coming home. Like, I don't want to do this yeah, anymore. Yeah. She's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, well, I mean, I am coming yeah. home. So you're going to have to deal with it. Uh-huh. And it was just not – I my last team I played on was in Scafati. And um, anybody out here who knows about, like, Naples, at least in 2017, it was like you can drive any way on the highway. It was like burnt cars and just a weird – Yeah. Just, I was 21 and like hadn't seen the world yet. And that was very weird for me. So then when you go to Safadi, it's like, it was like, it was just not right for me. 
Mm-hmm. And looking back, it was a great experience. But just even when I left, man, it was like, I remember catching like eight trains to get back to Milan. And like, I had like all my life belongings with me and it was just not good. Yeah. And then um, I moved home and it was like, okay, what's next? Yeah. And that was like this, probably the scariest time in my life. Like yeah. I was, I was coming to terms with who I am and cultivating who I was, but then I was just like lost. Cause like your whole, you're, if you, when you, thankfully for me, I developed a lot of parts of my life, like just who I was as a person. I wanted to always be a student athlete, a person and yeah. cultivate that. But I mean, it's gotten better, but the institution of basketball, I think sometimes makes these players think that they're very special and then when you're no longer in that yeah when, when you're no longer a, a contributor or like a stud basketball player or whatever that world kind of just like forgets about you and like yeah. it, you have to be a normal person and yeah. you have to cultivate other things in your life and I think that was a weird time for me so I did not enjoy playing overseas I think it's mm-hmm. totally different now I think if I had a smartphone and yeah. 2021 it would probably be better or now they have like a g league where you can make coins and play yeah. in like a local stuff. i just that yeah. none of that was an option back then. yeah so, um and honestly when i stopped playing i didn't play for like five years i didn't even like touch a ball or yeah. like i only watched villanova i didn't really like i it wasn't even like it just naturally i just didn't have time for it yeah um thankfully i found a group of guys um I play for this traveling team called the Rock Dogs. I don't know if you can see this little thing right there, but they oh, got yeah, this yeah. Thing called, uh, it's just a group of guys, and it's like uh, the NGB. And it's like National Gay Basketball Association, and like I found a whole world of guys that are just like me and hoop and just and it just it brought me back to the sport. To be honest yeah. with you, and I've now got like two gold medals, and the last gold medal was in Paris. So yeah, oh, I mean. Wow. Italy was uh, wild <laughs> for me, and I'm glad that I did it. And then I moved to New York and took over. <laughs> yeah. So that league that you're playing in, is it like an actual pro league or was it like uh, – No, no, no. So um, it's an amateur league. It's called National Gay Basketball Association. Um, they have destination tournaments every three to four months in different locations. Okay. Um, and then it all builds up to either the out games or the gay games. It's like two different institutions. And my team um, is like one of the most legendary story – teams ever they're based in san francisco but a lot of the players come from all over and you play other teams that come together and i you know when you think about it i was like oh well, i'm gonna go there and kill and yeah like it's not even gonna be competitive and you, actually it is, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty lit and if um you know um i mean Derek gordon had played on my team but like i'm not even the best player on my team and you yeah. know some of the kids are like they play, they are hoopers. And yeah. Yeah. Good to find that, like, if anybody out there, you can always look on the internet and find someone who can, you know, give you more information on that. But yeah. it's just important that I, fa- I, I came back full circle with a game I love and I, I found a new love for it. And I'm, I, it's just, it's done wonders for my life and networking. And I mean, they have tournaments in Vegas, Austin. LA like when I ruptured my Achilles I ruptured it playing at UCLA in a tournament when I was like on I would always put my tours around the the tournament okay yeah Um, and that group of guys is now like my group you know my my chosen family and um the we just won the gay games in Paris and that was just a great experience that's awesome and so you know basketball has just done so much for my life and Villanova as well yeah for sure do, do you still keep in touch a lot with with uh, some of some of your former teammates? Yeah. So I don't know if another person that doesn't get enough respect and on his name is uh, is Chris Charles. He's a basketball legend. And okay. He's like he's won every MVP and every award overseas, and he's like a superstar. I think in Thailand or something like that. And he's always with Randy, and so I communicate with him and randy and uh me and alan keep in touch on social media uh briefly for a little while mike claxton was 
managing my music career for oh, a little really? bit. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was in there a little bit, like, and he just was like, man, it's a life. This is a whole different thing. Um, so that was cool. Um, if I see Bake, I love Baker Dunleavy. I love that he's coaching and doing what yeah. he loves. I obviously speak to Nardi, like, you know, often. Um, Marcus Austin, I speak to... Let me see who else. Jason. Obviously, I speak to Jason all the time. Yeah. I'm trying to get on his his show. His um, pod, yeah, yeah. So I just, you know, I really hate interviews, and I hate. I if I could just talk, that's fine. But like, yeah. it's just like reliving a whole life that was like, you know, for me, basketball and like Villanova basketball is at the core of who I am. Yeah, but for my personal development, I really had to, I had to go out and find what I was passionate about and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And performing was that for a decade. And I became, I rose to the top of that. And I think it gave me, it just, it, you know, it evened me out. It gave me a different purpose or a different, you know, identity. And, and I lived in that and I loved it. And, you know, part of my success in music was because of my experience at Villanova and becoming a, great person i think that's what coach Wright wanted for all of us so i just hope that for everybody that ever plays any sports specifically at villanova um that they get to cultivate who they are and just become the best version of them mm -hmm. yeah and then i mean obviously you've talked about it uh, bits and pieces throughout throughout our conversation but just talk about what you're up to now creating music what that's been like and just, just what you're up to yeah you know um so music is fun. I started my music career by being a writer. I was a journalist. Okay. I wrote for um, Source Magazine. Then I developed, I just developed this need to be on stage. And I felt like there was a lane that wasn't being touched. So when it comes to queer performers or gay artists, I think I rose to a high level. I was headlining music festivals, touring. Mm -hmm. And then you get to a certain point and you just want more. And I think as an as a person who has achieved a certain level of success over here and then you get to here and you're like, I'm getting older. I wanted to do more things. And now I'm, um, I run a music festival for other artists called Giant Fest, um, which we did really great on this just virtual uh rendition of it so it'll be the third year coming up this okay. summer um and then i'll probably we'll do it and we'll, we'll we're still cultivating how we're going to do it because of covid um yeah. but giant fest is a big part of my life um i co-produce that with this other artist scenario um i do event production with a production company called ao production um and i just moved to delaware where i'm going okay. to help my mom do some things and just really, I haven't been here in 17 years. I just, yeah. I, I just want to help her. I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm super awesome. And I want her to get in some of this, get some of this awesome sauce while I still yeah. have her. I lost my dad at 62, my mom is 61. So now I work for a commercial insurance company um, and I'm happy. And yeah. I get to be closer to Villanova. I get to be closer to my family. And I'm, you know, if you're out there in Villanova, alumni, and you're in the area, hit me up, man. I'm just super on Instagram. And oh, yeah. I haven't really like Snapchat like that. I just, it's not my thing, but I'm, I'm yeah. super available and here to network and just like keep growing. I think like every certain couple of amount, every amount, of, every couple of years, I kind of change up who I am. And yeah, I think this version of me is going to be like the adult entrepreneur, businessman version of me. And I think, uh, you know, I got some things brewing and it's good. I'm happy about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely definitely be keeping tabs with you. Yeah. So just my, my final question is, do you ever go back to Nova and do you keep up with them currently, like watching games nowadays? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm totally – March Madness is yeah. terrible for me. It's always been that way. People are like, fill out a bracket, fill out a bracket, right? And you got to think so. It's been what? I graduated in 2007. It's been all these years, and I always pick Villanova to win. And out of those yeah. years, I got two of them. So. Yeah. Uh, but like when we're not in it, I don't even care. Like I don't, yeah. I'm not rooting for other teams. Yeah, no, 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 for Nova. Like and yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not happy when we lose to the eventual champion. I know that's great and all, but yeah. I don't want to. I'm only rooting for my team. I'm not. I don't understand how people are fans of Duke and you didn't go to Duke. I don't get yeah. it. Like and all that. So uh, I, I definitely keep up with the team. I'm so proud of them. I, I support all the guys in the NBA. It makes watching the NBA great. Like Josh right. Hart. Uh, you know Amari, um, just you know all Pascal, all those all those guys. Um, yeah. 
all of them. I'm just watching them in the NBA and I just love it. And like, you know, watching them develop and definitely keep in touch with coach Wright um, and the coaching staff. And I support Villanova basketball to the death of me. I have not been to the fan yet. I just, yeah. I blame that on being like a New Yorker and I'm just always, I was always in my life. Mm-hmm. I would go to all the games at the garden. I keep in touch with all the alumni that reach out to me. Yeah. Shout out to Chuck Everson. He's the guy that I just everybody talked to connects Chuck everybody. Yeah. Oh, I just connects to everybody. He's the yeah. best. Man. He's awesome. um, and, you know, just I keep up with everything. You know, Jeff Pierce just retired. He did my rehab on my leg mm-hmm. with me. And, you know, I just I'm I'm a very approachable guy. I think people yeah. may build these things up about who I am in their head. But I'm really I've always just been a human being (laughs) a great human being i think at that and you know i had to just develop who i am and i'm just happy that you know when i was coming out on espn i think coach Wright was most concerned that i was going to tarnish my legacy in some way if i did it the wrong way Uh and to this date i did it the right way so i'm happy that i could just be me and not like have to pretend no see some people not living their life so, I, yeah, I definitely follow Villanova. I definitely follow all the pros. Um, you know, Brunson killing it. Archie killing it. Archie's little brother is about to be a piece. I know. Point guard. Like, I how love excited it. is that? We got I love it. Back. I love it. You know, I, I'm excited to see how Colin, um, you know, recovers and comes back. And I'm happy for all the guys that are leaving early to go to the pros. And just, I'm a Villanova guy. I always will be. It's just part of who I am. And thinking back, like what a high school kid made the decision that he wanted to go to Villanova before it was even like whatever. And yeah. I just sometimes you make good decisions in life. And yeah, that was, this was a good decision. Yeah, you know? so, for sure. yeah and I, I got a whole family and a whole the, the whole Nova Nation definitely supports me. Um, I got all these music videos. I shot a music video at Villanova before they let me oh, do really? that. Like it was. Yeah. Like all that. Is, I'm just, you know, I'm living my life. I'm happy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, any student athlete that, you know, wants a nurturing environment, Villanova is the place to go. Yeah. Have yeah. you, um, sorry, what? No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, have you talked to Nana and Joku at all? Because he went to your high school. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, right. Um, I, I always think that the legacy of Delaware basketball is overlooked on a nationwide level, right? Uh-huh. So think about this. Villanova now has a starting five from Villanova. I mean, from Delaware. Yeah. Jermaine, I'm, I may be missing somebody, but in my lifetime, from what I know. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, Jermaine Medley was a point guard that played at Villanova. Beast, right? Okay. From in Delaware. Aaron Matthews was like a 3-4, kind of like Kurt Summer, um, Kurt, um, Kurt Sumter. Um, Aaron Matthews was like a 3-4 athletic beast, right? Then you got Dante. Yeah. We all know what he does, right? Yeah. He gets busy. Then you got me, and now you got Nana. That yeah. closes out the starting five from yeah. Delaware. I'm so happy for him. He just got Delaware Player of the Year. He went to the high school I go to. He came up under uh, Coach Waterman. I really wanted to, like, see if I could help in any way, but because of COVID, we really couldn't connect. Yeah. Uh, but I, I look forward to his development and watching him grow. He's a beast. He's athletic. He's smart. He's a great person mm-hmm. from what I hear. And um, I didn't really get to see him play this year because of COVID. I think it's crazy that they had to play a mask and all that, but the yeah. pandemic is the pandemic. And I'm excited to watch him grow and follow him with coach and another warrior going to the Wildcats. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. Yeah. And um he's just and I'm I'm sorry if I if I forgot somebody that was from Delaware. Oh no, not that I know of, but yeah. I'm saying I mean if also, uh-huh. if, you, if you're watching this and it makes you feel away, reach out to me, then I'll know and I can add it to the story next time. All right. uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for him. I think that's a great legacy of uh, Delaware guys going to Villanova. I'm a big Delaware guy. I'm here now. So I'm here to like cultivate some new things and make new, yeah. make new moves. So for sure. All right. Well, well, thank you so much for taking the time. Absolutely, man. It. And I, I always feel like I talk so much, but yeah, this no, is great. I love sure. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> love the conversation.